Hello, welcome. We're live again here in the Digital DJ Tips studio with me, Phil, for another Tuesday Tips Live. This is our free to air show on YouTube, Twitch, and our preferred platform, Facebook, I'll tell you why in a minute, where we impart some of the teaching that we share with our students at the school for free every Tuesday at this time, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern, normally. But because of the vagarities of when the clocks change in the US and the UK, it's actually 11 a.m. Eastern. So if you're watching us anywhere stateside, then you're getting to watch us an hour later. You've had a lie-in, which is all good. So we're live. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we have got a really good show for you today because we're sharing some brand new training, which is uh, a, an abridged version of some training that is in our brand new course. And our brand new course is called Mixing for Mobile and Wedding DJs. And that course is going to be launching in about 48 hours from now, literally. We are very, very close to launching that course. Uh, I'd be lying if I said it was completely finished. It's me that's yet to finish the bits that I'm meant to be doing. The team are screaming at me, Phil, we need the intro video. Phil, we need you to redo that thing on beat gridding that wasn't quite right, blah, blah, blah. Trust me, all gonna be ready on time. It's a great new course and it's very new because there's literally nothing, nothing out there like it at all. It's unique. We've made a course for, Mick, for mobile and wedding DJs uh, and that hasn't been done before and it's, Something that I want to tell you more about, so what I'd like you to do if you're not a member of Digital DJ Tips is join, and you can do that by going to digitaldjtips.com slash join, and then we can let you know all about this course when it comes live, but this training is from it. The whole point is that the best DJs today can mix properly with all kinds of music, and they don't need special versions of that music or special equipment or pre-prepared mixes or anything, that you can just do it. And the course is about showing you how to do that and then giving you lots of examples that you can use in your own DJing. As I say, it's unique. No one has done anything like this for the hardest working DJs of the lot mobile and wedding DJs. So we're really excited to bring that course to you. Uh, and today's training is all about it. So what is the training? Well, here is the absolute key. If you want to do the kind of mixing that you see the best wedding, mobile event, corporate DJs doing, where they're literally taking six decades of music, right? Everything from the 50s up until now and banging it together and doing really impressive blends and really impressive switches and changes of styles and BPM while still keeping generations on the dance floor together, having a happy time. If you've watched those kind of DJs and thought, how do they do that? Well, that's what the course is about. But here's the thing. You've actually won or lost that battle when you arrive at your DJ gear. Before you play the first note, you have won or lost that battle. Why? Because if you haven't prepared properly for any DJ set where you're expecting to do the kind of quick mixing, the quick genre and BPM changes, the switch ups between different ages of music and different styles of music and so on, and do that stuff quickly and efficiently, mix after mix. If you haven't prepared, there's no way in the world you're gonna be able to do it. Unless you're a DJ that's been doing this for 50 years and you're among the top 1% who is a total genius at this, you can't do it. You have to be prepared. So in this free lesson today, which is based on the actual training in the course, mixing for mobile and wedding DJs, which is launching in 48 hours, I'm gonna talk you through the five things that the best mobile wedding and event DJs are doing that you're probably not, that means they're able to do this. Right, shall we get started? As always, we're live on Facebook where you can, I said I'd tell you why Facebook is our preferred platform and the reason is very simple. On Facebook, anything you say to us will be there when the live show ends, underneath as if you just typed it. And that means we can get back to you and help you with whatever question you've got, whatever query you've got. On YouTube, it doesn't work like that because all the chat comments disappear and it's almost like a new video. So we lose your questions if we haven't been able to answer them live. And on Twitch, we don't keep a recording. So while we love you Twitch people, while we love you YouTubers, we want you on Facebook to watch this because we can serve you better there. So our Facebook page, facebook.com slash digitaldjtips.com is the best place to follow this. Uh, okay, let us now talk about the five things you need to do to prepare your music. And I'm already seeing some brilliant 
incredible questions coming through. Exactly the kind of thing that this course answers and helps with. So thank you to everyone who's already asking questions. I see all the comments coming through here. If you're new to this, look, I have a screen here streaming all the comments that are coming in live. As you can see, you've got dozens and dozens and dozens already, but plenty of time to get to that because we're going to start off by showing you where you can actually follow a version of this training right now because we've just published an article on the Digital DJ Tips website that summarizes what I'm about to teach you now. So on Digital DJ Tips, head there afterwards. It's also where you can join by clicking the link at the top. Uh, you want to find the five music prep secrets of the best mobile and wedding DJs. That article at the time of recording this is currently top. Click on there and you'll go through to what I'm about to teach you now and you'll be able to follow up on it there. Uh, so right, what are these secrets? Why are they important? Well, I've just kind of shared a little bit with you and th that is that you've got to prepare your music if you want to mix with it in a nutshell. And so I'm going to talk about the five ways of doing that that these DJs are doing and that you need to do if you want to mix like this. You saw the first one on the screen then and it's hugely important. It's called beat gridding. So beat gridding is where you make sure that your software has got these lines correct. These lines are showing you the beats and bars on the songs and these two are old disco songs actually and I can see already looking at this that they're not correct. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is you need to get them correct. So beat gridding is one of those things that underlines the way DJing is done today. If you want to use sync, and by the way sync is not cheating when you're DJing with 60s pop and modern EDM and everything in between, you're going to need your sync button. If you want to use sync, if you want to use uh, looping, if you want to use effects which re require rhythm like echoes and delays, you've got to have the beat grids right because the beat grids is your DJ software's way of knowing where the beats are in your songs. It's literally a grid laid over the song. And if you get that wrong, everything else goes wrong. So the first thing you've got to do is get them right. Now, luckily, DJ software is very good. DJ systems are very good. When you first add your music, it will analyze that music and it will usually get the beat grids perfect. If it gets them wrong, it's going to get them wrong in a way that can normally be predicted. It will choose the first beat of the song wrong. So the first beat's in the wrong place. So you need to say, no, 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 that's the first beat. Then everything else falls into place. Occasionally it will guess a song at double the speed it should be or half the speed it should be. So you know on a piano keyboard when you play the octaves, right? You play a low C, a middle C and a high C. Dum, dum, dum. It's all the same note, right? It's just a lot higher or a lot lower. It's the same thing with beat gridding in a way. If it guesses the BPM double or double again or half or half again, it's all the same grid. It's just filled in the lines in the middle or not bothered with the lines between the ones it's already put in. It's like it's already guessed the beat correctly. You just have to say, actually, this isn't double the speed. You know, this is a laid back R&B song. It's not, not drum and bass. Just halve that. Again, very obvious, very simple, very common as far as mistakes go. Click a button, half, double, done. And every now and then there is an issue and a good example actually I've got loaded on my screen here. I've got uh, a couple of old disco songs. I've got Le Freak by Chic and Boogie Wonderland here. These are recorded before drum machines, before click tracks and before programmed rhythms. Real drummers in other words. And so these aren't going to be correct. And so these are the songs and there's not many of them but of course as a mobile or wedding or event DJ some of your songs are going to be like this. These are the songs that need a bit more work and that's when you need to figure out going into your software how to beat grid your songs. Now it's different in all software but there's always a grid control that you can click on. It's edit grid there in Serato and this will give me all the controls I need. They're here to start setting the grid. Now I can't go into that in a, a short live lesson like this but we do go into it in more detail in the course I was telling you about mixing for mobile and wedding DJs. All you need to know is it's not hard. This stuff is not difficult. It's just a case of where's the first beat? Mark it. One, two, three, four. Oh look they're slipping out a bit. Stick another marker down. Continue through the song and then your grids are done. Once you've beat gridded your songs, remember once you've done that sync will work which means you can do a lot of the tricks that we show you in this course and that mobile and wedding and event DJs use that you simply can't do without the sync button. Uh, one good one is locking two songs together and then slowing them both down at the same rate. You, could, you just can't do that without that function. 
but also your effects will work, your loops, and we're gonna talk about loops in a minute. It's really important to get this right, quantize, the whole digital ecosystem when it comes to DJing with digital music ties around accurate beat grids. So you have to get your beat grids right. That's the first point. The second point, so let's go back to our article so you are familiar with it when you do the right thing and go and follow it later on. Uh, the second music prep secret of the best mobile and wedding DJs is adding hot cues to all tracks. So I know DJs that even nowadays when they're DJing, They'll load a track onto a deck and then they will throw the track in as if it was a piece of vinyl, right? They'll start the button playing, press start, they'll hold the deck here and they go, whoa, and throw the track in. Because that's how they used to DJ with vinyl. Look, that's fine if you never want to do anything more than DJ how you used to DJ with vinyl. But you're then using hardly any of the features of your DJ gear. Cue points are important. The most important cue, and the one that most people, to be fair nowadays, tend to use, is when you're at the beginning of the track, finding the first beat of the track, and then hitting a cue button. So you've got a cue point there on the first beat of the track, right? But these cues are temporary. Here, on the pads, as shown in our little diagram there, you get cues which are permanent. In other words, when you set cues on these pads here, they stay. See, I've set them all there. And they'll stay. When I take that track off that deck and load it again, they'll still be there. And that means that you can mark sections of your tracks, do work in advance, and the next time you load the track, that track will have all those cues there. Now, this is really useful. In fact, it's essential for mixing because you can mark the first beat of the track. You can mark the first place where it's safe to mix out of that track. You can mark where the vocal arrives or the verse or the chorus or the drop or the breakdown. You can mark where you should use loops and we're gonna get onto that in a minute. In other words, by using the eight generally hot cues available to you on a DJ system, you can mark up that track so that it is, when you load it, you can immediately see all that stuff. Here's where the chorus is, here's where the vocal comes in, here's where I can mix out from, here's where to mix in from. You could literally load a track and it's kind of like reading. You look at the cues and you read the track and you know what you're working with. And trust me, when you've done that with a few tracks, you will never load a track and think, hmm, how am I gonna mix this again? Because you can see it all laid out for you. And what we teach in the course, of course, is how to then use those cue points uh, to meld your tracks together, put your tracks together into a set in order to, to quick mix in the way you see the best mobile and wedding DJs doing. So it's important to have your cue points put in and it's important to have a system as well. You might have seen there on these, I just put them all on randomly, but you can change the colors of your cue points in your software. So for instance, I'm using Serato here. Uh, I could change the colors of the cue points in Serato so that they make sense. Uh, by right clicking on the cue and then just choosing the color I want. And I can also alter what's written on the cue point. So I could change the first one to say start. So now that cue is marked up as my first cue point on my track and it's got a word written on it as well, which is super useful, especially if you start using colors to mean various things, having a color coded system for your cues and a system of how you label them. And again, we teach this in the course, it's called the super simple hot cue system. Uh, and so hot cues are really important because they just make it easier to not only mix more quickly, but mix more consistently and make fewer mistakes. So if you want to mix, and I actually, Usually we answer the questions that you guys and girls are asking at the end, but I saw such a good one come in earlier and I, I, I apologize for not knowing the name of the person who asked it because they're not on my screen anymore, who said, I don't like the quick mixing style of DJs who are just banging from track to track. The point is, just because you know it, it doesn't mean you've got to do it all the time. And once you know how to get cleanly and properly and competently from one track to another, you don't have to do it after 10 seconds, you can do it after 30 seconds or 60 seconds or 90 seconds or at the end of the track. So you could play a set where all you're doing is playing track after track after track, beginning to end, and you can still apply these techniques to sound so many times better than you do now. And here's the thing, nowadays, think this through, and if you think I'm wrong, tell me in those comments because I challenge you. The couples hiring DJs, and we all know that when it comes to mobile wedding event DJing, it's the weddings that pay. The couples hiring wedding DJs for top money nowadays want DJs who can mix. And the reason they want DJs who can mix is that when they were young, 
when they were going out, when they probably met each other, when they had the formative musical years of their lives, they weren't hanging around in sticky carpeted little discos on the corner of town. They were going to festivals. They were seeing the biggest EDM DJs in the world with choreographed shows. They were going to clubs where touring DJs did an amazing job of the music with visuals and everything. They don't want some half-baked, old-school mobile DJ doing what mobile DJs have always done. Blending slowly from track to track, mumbling into a microphone and doing very little more. It doesn't matter how good your music is, doesn't matter how good an MC you are, doesn't matter how good your programming are. In this day and age, unless you can mix, increasingly you're becoming irrelevant to the very people who are going to pay you top money. And of course it's not just weddings, it's anyone booking with the money to throw parties and book mobile DJs. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when they were teenagers, guess what? They were listening to good mixing DJs. And there's a bit of a problem here and a bit of a, ah, oh, shucks. Because in all honesty, it was easier and is easier to mix dance music than it is to mix the world of music, right? If you've got 20 David Guetta songs, you can mix them pretty easily. Give you an hour on a piece of DJ gear and some decent tuition. If you're trying to mix the Beatles with, uh, ABBA with Lady Gaga with Lizzo and you're trying to keep a whole dance floor happy and you're trying to apply the same techniques, you need to be good at this. And it's almost like there's a, it's more of a challenge for mobile DJs, who by the way are the hardest working DJs in the world anyway. It's harder for them than club DJs. So that's what this course is about and that's what these things I'm teaching you about. It's not about necessarily quick mixing, throwing in song after song after song after song after song, although there's, a, there's a definitely a place for that. It's about having the skills to do that and everything else is expected of you nowadays. Right, that was a bit of a rant, but it's important. Let's move on now to our third. We've already covered beat gridding and we've already covered hot cues. Let's move on to our third skill that you need if you want to mix music like the best at mobile, wedding and corporate gigs. You need to be pre-planning your loops. Pre-planning your loops. Uh, as I say here in the beginning of the article, which you can find currently on Digital DJ Tips, it's hard to overstate the importance of loops in modern DJing. Loops came of age with CDJs, right? The first CDJs, where are my CDJs? Oh, they're set up in the corner, of course they are. The first CDJs had looping on them. And for the first time, you could hit loop, count four beats or whatever, hit loop again, and you could have a clean loop to DJ over. Nowadays, looping is far more useful than that because nowadays, equipment, and it's still in the same place, the buttons are still in the same place they've always been. Uh, nowadays, looping is tied to the beat, another reason to get your beat grids correct. Yes, you can still do manual loops, but you can also just hit a button and have a clean loop instantly on all DJ gear. And that means that you can instantly set up a, a bed of beats, if you like, to mix over the top of. And nearly all songs, if you know where to look, even the most overproduced two and a half minute pop songs will have a beat or two beats or something that you can loop. And when you know what to do with that loop, it makes those unmixable songs immediately mixable. So once you've got your beat grids right and you hit that loop button in the right place, you've immediately added something to that track that means you can mix in or out of it. But knowing and remembering that stuff ain't gonna happen. Of course it's not gonna happen or across all your library. And that's why pre-planning your loops is so important. Now, none of these things need to take a lot of time, by the way. And the way you would implement any of this is by starting with your new songs. And when you get time going back and doing the most popular older songs and slowly you'll get through your library. And by the way, if you haven't added cues, loops, beat grids and stuff to songs after a year or two, Chuck them out because you ain't playing them again. You haven't played them for a couple of years, but I digress. So how do we do it? Well, with loops, it's one of two ways. The way that you can do it in most software nowadays is you set a loop somewhere and you hit a button and it will remember that loop. In other words, it's just like remembering a hot cue. Sometimes it can't do that. Sometimes, oh, by the way, you can then change their color and label them just like you can with hot cues. And again, we suggest how to do that in the mixing for mobile and wedding DJs course. Once you've done that, 
they're there and you can just cue them up and dial them in when you're DJing, great. And again, you can read your track by looking at where the loops are. Another way of doing that, which takes it a bit further, is by adding what are called active loops. And an active loop will always trigger when you play a track. So the classic example of this is a locked groove. Remember locked grooves at the end of vinyl? Sometimes on dance vinyl, at the very end of the track, they would have a groove here, so the, the needle would hit here and it'd go round and round and round and it would just go mm, tsh, mm, tsh, mm, tsh, mm, tsh, and continue playing forever. That was called a locked groove. And you can add locked grooves to your tracks nowadays digitally by putting a loop, an active loop that always triggers at the end somewhere where there's just a beat. So that means that the track will never end and you can always mix out of it. So active loops are another way if you know you're always going to want to loop at a certain point in the track of adding a loop. But even if your DJ gear doesn't let you save loops, no worries, we've already talked about it, you just use the hot cues. You have a hot cue that is a colour that always means loop at this point. So let's say you always use blue to mark a loop point. I think we use orange in the course actually. You mark your point and then in the comments or in the in the label for that hot cue you'll say four four beat loop or whatever and it tells you immediately what to loop at that point but loops are very very important they're important to understand and they're important to use uh, because they make this kind of mixing a lot easier right we are doing the five music preparation secrets of the best mixing mobile and wedding DJs. Uh, and we've done three, we've done beat grids, cues and loops. I've got two more, and then we're gonna spend the rest of our time together in this free lesson from us here at Digital DJ Tips, talking about all this stuff. Uh, and we're doing this this week, it's a celebration of our new course, Mixing for Mobile and Wedding DJs, which launches in under 48 hours. Duh, duh, duh. Go to digitaldjtips.com slash join, uh, and join our mailing list now, because we can then let you know by email when it launches and give you our customarily generous launch offer, which is only going to that list. Right, let us continue, or we continue, as Pete Tong would say. Uh, so number four of our five things that the best mobile and wedding mixing DJs do is analyzing for key, because Really, I think digital DJing, and I've been doing it ever since the beginning, has given us two really big things, two really, really big things. Number one, it's given us the ability to take all the music we want with us, no heavy record boxes. But number two, it's given us the ability to understand and use harmonic mixing or mixing in key. And that changes everything. So the ability to do that, especially when you're DJing with six decades of music from everything that was ever made in the 50s all the way up to the stuff being made today, sometimes the very fact that you can match the musical key of these songs gives you a gateway, a portal if you like, to go from one genre and one age to another one really smoothly and really nicely. It stops mixing being limited by the points where there's no musical information in the songs. Because if there's musical information in the songs, and by that I mean melody of any kind, vocals, bass lines, pianos, uh, anything that's got a note, then it needs to match the notes in the other song or it's gonna sound crap. And so, Traditionally, DJs have looked for places where there's just a beat going so they can mix something else over. As long as you understand key and harmony and you can use the stuff that's built into digital DJ gear to let you do that, uh, and the most important thing is the master tempo control that means that when the track's playing, it doesn't go up or down in pitch when you put it up or down in speed. As long as you understand that stuff and you understand the way key is told to you on your DJ system, and in this system here, it's told to us here, 8A, both of these tracks are in the key of 8A. This is called the Camelot system. There's another one called Open Key, but they're not the same as the way key is spoken about by musicians who will say C sharp or F minor. As long as you understand this system, and as long as you can use the basic controls on your system, i.e. master tempo, then you're in a position to start using key. And some DJ systems, not this one, but most nowadays also have the ability to shift the key of your songs. And when you can shift the key of your songs, actually there's no excuse because every single song you play, when you pick another song, there's a very high chance that within a note or two in either direction of where it was made, it will match the key of the first song. We call that fuzzy key mixing, by the way. It's another, another thing entirely. But the point is, and by the way, Key can get very, very difficult. And that's why in the course, mixing for mobile and wedding DJs, 
I have produced what I called the shortest complete guide to musical key ever. I think it's about 13 minutes, uh, but it really does just nail everything you need to know. But once you know that stuff, and once you've done the key analysis on your tracks, you're in a position when you're DJing to basically say very quickly, is matching the key going to help? And if it is, bang, it's going to take you less than a second to dial that in and know that you're in key with the two tracks you're playing. It's hugely, hugely, like I said, apart from the fact you can carry around all the music in the world with you, I think that that is the biggest single thing that digital DJing has brought us. And the DJs that take the time to understand that are the ones you hear playing those amazing sets at the mobile, wedding, corporate, event, gigs, where they just seem to be able to mix anything into anything and it just sounds right. So number four is key. And finally, the fifth thing that these DJs know that you probably don't is that they don't DJ from track to track. And this was another thing I saw when I had a, that, that tiny little peek in the comments a minute ago. Someone saying, it must be so tiring. I can't understand how you could play for more than half an hour playing that style of mixing where you, where you just quickly go from track to track. And I get it, that's hard. Because if you imagine that you've got all your music on a library in front of you and you're saying, in two minutes time, I wanna play another song. In two minutes time, I wanna play another song. In two minutes time, I wanna play another song. You're gonna go mad. And some, you know, in the States, sometimes the music part of a wedding might be 45 minutes, right? You know, at the very end of the wedding. In the UK and in other places, it could be a whole night. It could be five or six hours because the wedding happens and then you've got a reception in the evening where a whole new load of people turn up. You can't DJ for six hours like that. You need a strategy. And the strategy is called mini sets. So what are mini sets? Mini sets are where you put together tracks which work well together. Now, these aren't little sets that you always play in the same order, and they're not tracks that you have to play every one of them, but the point is you will have lots of little mini pre-prepared sets of tracks that work well together, that you tend to play together, because that's the way we tend to work as DJs. So, for instance, let me just dial up the library in this software here and show you a few. So here's some, this is our library that we use to teach the course that we're just on. Um, so look, I've got, this one says, Bad Habits Blue, Crying Genie. So these are just pairs of songs that work well together. Here's a good one, Disco Choruses, right? Let's dial into this one. So here I've got, we were already looking at some of the songs because I loaded them a minute ago. Uh, we've got Good Times by Chic, We Are Family by Sister Sledge, Le Freak by Chic, Boogie Wonderland by Earth, Wind & Fire, Ain't No Stopping Us Now by McFadden & Whitehead, Sister Sledge is Lost in Music, Disco Inferno by The Tramps, The Village People's YMCA, Wild Cherry Play That Funky Music. You've got a huge idea now looking at that of both a time in music, you know, and also a style of music. And I bet if you think of some of those songs and you've ever DJed weddings, you can close your eyes and kind of picture who's on the dance floor and who's enjoying those songs, right? That is a great example of a mini set. Fast BPM pop. Take On Me by AHA. Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. Harry Styles as it was. Overpass Graffiti by Ed Sheeran. Look at the BPMs, 176, 174, 171, 169. This is a little set here. Now you might not play all four of those, and next week there might be a couple more songs you put in there that are in that style. And you might get bored of some of these and take those out. But you can see what I mean, right? That is a set of music that you might well play together. And the beauty of this is you're probably used to playing some of these tracks together. You probably know how to mix them together. And if you don't, putting them together will encourage you to find that out. But if your library looks like this one, where you've got lots and lots of these mini sets here, then what happens is when you're DJing at a gig, you're moving from mini set to mini set and not from track to track to track to track to track. And so you could play within one mini set. Let's say you played five songs and you play two minutes of each song, then every time you go back to the decks, you're only looking at another 10 songs. And you say, oh, which one of those shall I play next that I know work well together anyway? So you're far more relaxed. And then really the decisions only become, what mini set shall I move to next? And you're watching your dance floor and they've had enough of your kind of late 70s disco and you want to move to something else. So you find the next mini set that will work. It's a lot more relaxed and it's how quick mixing DJs get through those long sets where they seem to be doing it all night, but just the tracks are flying out of the virtual record crates onto the decks. They're doing it because they've planned mini sets. 
So these are a very important way of preparing your music. Now, as I said, uh, this is all from our new course. It's all in the article, which you can find on Digital DJ Tips now. So I encourage you to go and look at that. Five music prep secrets of the best mobile and wedding DJs. But it's also in our brand new course that launches in 48 hours. It's the biggest mixing course we've ever made. Uh, and it's speci specifically for mobile and wedding DJs, teaching how to mix six decades of music really well in a relaxed vibe, without panicking, getting it right every time. And it calls on all these things, beat gridding, cues, loops, as we just discussed here, uh, key and mini sets. So there is an introduction to what's in this course. The course takes you, that's the first module of it, right? So we, we prepare you. Then we move into the actual mixing. So then we give you all the basic mixes that you need. And then we give you 31 done for you transitions and routines. And the idea of these is because we're talking mobile, wedding, corporate, event DJing, there is a body of work, there is a, a, a set of songs that have been played for many years and will be played for many years. We've taken those songs and we figured out some transitions that you can take immediately and use now and forevermore in your sets using those songs. So we encourage you to take them and use them. They're classics. Um, but we've also uh, Sh shown you how it's done. We've broken it apart. We've shown you everything you need to know. There's like sheets that show you where the cue points should be. We explain the thinking behind it. We talk to you about what basic skills that are taught in the course are necessary and are used in each of those transitions. And so the whole idea is that once you've learned those and you're using the ones you like in your DJ, you'll just be spotting the same things in your own music and starting to find transitions that work for you too. It's a great course, as you can tell, we're very excited about it. Uh, but that's it for another day. That's coming in two days time. Just make sure you're a member of Digital DJ Tips uh, if you want to uh, benefit from the discount. The, the, I'm not allowed to call it a discount, I don't know why, but the, the opening offer that we have on that course. Just go to the Digital DJ Tips website uh, and click here. Get your free DJ gear guide and Amazon bestseller. That will take you to our sign up page. And once you're on that list, you will receive information about this new course when it launches. So, well, that's the training for today. I hope you found it useful. I now want to go over to you guys and girls. What time are we at? We're at 25 to 5 in Central Europe, where we are. We'll, st we'll hang around for another 20 minutes, if so. Uh, also, depending on whether I've got comments to answer, you might all be saying, Phil, you're boring me. Uh, but I suspect we're going to have some people who want to talk about this topic. So I'll pull my laptop in a bit closer and let's get chatting. Um, so hello to all of our regulars. So to DJ 4X Lit over there in Charlotte in the USA on Twitch. Hello to Alex and Mark and LP Remix, DJ Ginormous and Skyborn, who are all on YouTube. To, uh, to Wayne and Jeff and uh, Jacob on Facebook and lots more of our regulars piling in. Hello the Ruckus. Hello Alex. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> Kamzi says, how's it going, guys? I thought I would join to say hi, uh, but ESCOM decided to move us to stage two. That doesn't sound good, even though I've no idea what ESCOM or stage two mean. Uh, but the outcome is my power could be going off any minute now. Uh, so as always, I'll join the replay once it's back on. So um, hope your power's still on, Kamzi. Uh, Right, let's grab some uh, comments about this topic. It's lovely to have so many of our beginners, uh, uh, beginners of our uh, regulars here, but I do want to grab topics. So uh, Doc Funkist says, I have noticed most advanced skilled DJs, uh, those who play with samplers, etc., most of their sets are not longer than 30 minutes. Let's talk about this. This is really, really crucial because there's a difference between a DJ routine and DJing to keep a crowd happy. A DJ routine is where you pre-practice every move of a performance. And people will, you know, you're, you're entering competitions. We're talking DMC, we're talking Red Bull, Three Star. People have stood there like that. Wow, you see what he did? That's incredible. And the people who understand DJing are like, oh, wow. And you might be sat there going, really? Didn't really notice anything there. It's turntablism, it's performance DJing, it's awesome. And if you want to learn that, by the way, we've got courses. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking here about keeping a dance floor happy. We're talking about taking the skills that have been used to keep clubs happy for decades now, for hours and hours, and applying those skills 
to the kind of music you have to play if you want to keep a mobile wedding, birthday party, corporate event, dance floor happy. And yes, it could involve you having 45 minutes where you really bang the tracks in one after another, after another, after another, very quickly, high energy. But it could equally mean you're DJing very subtly while people are eating, sat at their tables, and you still want to do a good job of it. You still want to mix properly. You still want to do what's expected of you, right? So we're talking about playing for people, not at people. And there's a big difference. And that's why this kind of DJing has to be done for more than half an hour, right? Because it's not a performance. It is DJing to keep a dance floor happy. Uh, right, so a few of you commenting on the fact that the clocks are all messed up at the moment between uh, both sides of the pond, Europe and the US. Yeah, we know that. Um, right, so DJ Stu C. Um, I'm sick of seeing wedding DJs up here in the north of England. Too many are stale. They're playing the same old tracks, usually far too loud through distorted speakers. I know, I know what you mean. Uh, you know, let's do stereotype here. They're fat, they've got a moustache, they're drunk and they're saying, oh, this is Ed Sheeran and now it's time for one thing. Yeah, we know. We know it's not Instagrammable, it's not cool, it doesn't wash with people who were brought up with EDM, with well-produced clubs and with festivals. And that's the problem for a lot of DJs. You have to realise that if you want to charge top money, if you want to stay relevant, you've got to up your game. And I don't mean you personally if you're watching this saying, well, I'm very, very careful with my mixing. It's not me and I, and I don't drink, I'm not fat and I don't have a moustache. Not that there's anything wrong with them, it's Movember, remember. But you get my point. You got to up your game. You got to look good, you got to sound good, and your skills have got to be good. So I'm totally with you there, DJ Stu C. Thank you for the comment. Um, so, um, hello, George in North Carolina. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, lots of chat going on about the, um, the, the cheesy bar DJs here. Um, so, uh, I have a gig, says Charlie, in January for a wedding, and it's two different cultures that are getting married. This discussion, I have to say, is right on time. Thanks, Phil and crew. Have a meeting with the people paying you, and if the couple are different than the people paying you, so it could be the parents paying you, have a meeting with them as well, preferably all together. Figure out what they want, what they think would be good, and then put your DJ head on, pass what they said, think it through, and figure out, and then you'll, you'll get a clearer idea of what's expected there. Um, so, uh, we're just looking for questions on this. Uh, a lot of you talking about beat gridding, that's where we started, and yes, there is a feature in DJ, DJ software is getting better at beat gridding. Even some of those songs where the BPM moves up about a bit, as a couple of you are pointing out, it can sometimes get that right without you needing to do anything else, which is great. Um, so uh, lots of you giving the thumbs up for wedding DJs. I've done a ton of weddings like that and they're super fun, says DJ Ginormous. Uh, I think personally, wedding, corporate, event, party, mobile DJs get a really bad press sometimes. It is the hardest job in the world. Just like I'm a, I'm a journalist, I've been a journalist ever since I edited papers when I, back in my student days. I understand writing, I understand journalism, and I can tell you something else. Writing for the popular papers, in the UK we're talking the Sun, the Mirror, the Star, is a lot harder than writing for the posh ones because you've got to come up with the headlines and the sentences and the, the way of making the story short and, and grabbing people's attention. You've got to come up with that every day, day in, day out, and keep those million, million selling papers flying out. And the posh, newspapers that are read by far fewer people don't have to do that. So actually it's harder to be a tabloid journalist than to be a broadsheet journalist to use the, the British terminology. And it's the same with DJing. It's harder to be the populist, play for everyone, get everyone happy, get everyone to forget their differences and just smile together and, and, and do something that appeals to the lot of them. It's much harder than it is to just play to a specialised crowd who've come for what you've got and who know what to expect. And so I won't have mobile wedding uh, event corporate DJs put down. I know how hard it is, I've done it. And so this course is for you. We hear you, we're for you. Right, um, so uh, Tractor says Treo uses different colors for different types of hot cue. That is true. And we do mention that I think briefly in the course. Tractor is unusual. It's the only DJ software that actually has different cue types. And you can have cue types that are specifically for markers. Uh, so thank you for sharing that Treo or Trio. Uh, Michael says, I wish Serato would allow us to set the cue colors other than the default. 
The first one is always red. I prefer it to be green, etc. Yeah, it is a second to go in and change them, but hey. Um, so, um, what else have we got here? I just want to quickly pull out some interesting bits and pieces from the, as you know, there's lots and lots and lots of uh, comments here because I showed you them earlier. Look at them all, you see. And we do this live. I don't have a producer here helping me. I'm literally sat here looking through your comments, trying to find the ones uh, that look uh, like they're covering stuff we haven't covered already. Um, so um, a lot of you talking about set planning, which is great. Uh, and DJ Ginormous says, I've never planned whole sets, but when I was doing weddings and stuff, I did have go-to mini sets that I would plug in at the appropriate time. So there you go, there's the mini set thing. Um, so the rocker says, my back's hurting just thinking about having to carry crates to gigs. I know, carrying your record box. This actually, this is my record box one of my record boxes from back in the day that I've saved. It's full of records at the moment. I've been working out. Now it's not, it's empty. The only records I still have left are up there. Um, they're not even any good. I don't honestly know. I think I packed a box to save and kept the wrong one. I sold all my records when I left the UK 20 years ago. Uh, I, think, I think I packed a box to keep and, and, and didn't bring it, bought that lot instead anyway. Don't play records anymore, don't care. Uh, let's carry on with uh, what you've got to say uh, about this. Ronnie says, Phil, you are an amazing tutor. Really like your style of teaching. The level of knowledge is just through the roof. Ronnie, thank you. And the check is in the post. Um, we're here to teach, it's what we do. And I'm glad you're enjoying it, it's a, it's a serious point there. Uh, my break is almost over, says Keshia. Uh, I'll see you all on Thursday. Oh, you're back again on Thursday. Have you been on holiday, Keshia? Anyway, nice to have you back. Um, so Aaron says, even though I never make sets and even though I mix all night, uh, I still do want to make mini sets. I get it and I'm glad you get it because mini sets really help, especially with mobile DJ. Because the thing with mobile DJing is it's kind of an accepted way to DJ, to play a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of that, right? You'll play 10 minutes of one style and then you want those people to go and have a rest. Uh, because frankly, unless they're teenagers, they haven't got the energy, energy to dance all night. They want to dance to two or three songs they know and then they want to go and have a drink and a socialize and a ciggy outside or whatever and then come back in and you're always cycling the dance floor, letting these people dance, then them, then them, then them, then them again, and then them again. And then trying to get that lot dancing you've not danced all night. And your job is to cycle through everyone in the room because it's the only way to DJ to a, such a large range of people that you get at this kind of gig. So playing these little mini sets not only makes it easier, but also it's actually how it makes sense to play anyway in this kind of gig. Um, certain labels make compilation albums, which makes mini sets really easy. I agree, if you can find compilation albums in a certain style, then that would be, uh, that would be something that would make it easy. Here's a great question, really great question. Um, so listen up if you're thinking about this course I've been talking about, because Creature, with a K, thank you Creature for the question, hits the nail on the head here. Creature says, how would you go from mini set to mini set? Creature, you're inspired. Look, it's a great question. Here is our set of mini sets, right? So let's say you've got some really good little transitions between the songs in here, like our disco choruses, for instance. You know how to transition between these few songs, uh, and you also know how to transition through the, the fast BPM pop songs that we were talking about, or whatever, right? But how do you move from one to the other? Well, that is where the basic techniques that we teach in the course help you. We teach you techniques like, well, I'll give you the names of some of them. The names aren't really that important at this stage, but you've got to just know that they exist. We call them things like the cut, the offset cut, the vinyl break, the vinyl spin back, the, um, the, the stuttered cue start, uh, reverb out, echo out, and there's several others as well. We teach a whole module of them in the course. These are the techniques that combined with accurate beat grids, and the ability to count beats and bars. And by the way, we teach that as well. We kind of assume that you don't know that stuff. So there's one lesson at the beginning that some of you will want to skip over, but some of you will be like, I, I never actually knew that. Thanks for telling me. Um, once you know that stuff, these are the techniques that will let you get from any song into any other song. Doesn't matter what the genre, doesn't matter what the style, doesn't matter whether you're changing the mood up or down. So once you know those techniques, you can easily move from mini set to mini set to mini set. And indeed, you can use the same techniques within the mini sets, right? So this is the difference between having stuff you've practiced and stuff that you just know and that you can do anywhere. I mean, some of these techniques that we teach, uh, the reverb out is a classic, and I'm sure if you've used it, you know. 
it's such a natural sounding thing that you can literally use it anywhere. But the thing is, anything can be overused. And so in the course, we teach you like 10 different ways of just doing that simple thing, how to get from one track to another, no matter what the two tracks are. And then we move on and teach you the clever stuff on top of that so that you're never doing the same thing over and over again. You remember when DJ software first had sirens on it and, and uh, you used to hear some DJ sat in the corner of a bar with a cracked copy of Virtual DJ, literally going, ah, new song. And you're like, oh, please, you don't want to be that DJ. You want to know a few different ways of doing stuff. So they're all in there, but it's a great question. Thank you for that one creature. Uh, right, we're going to just take one or two more uh, of our questions here. Um, that came in live. Oh, I do like it when I'm challenged. Thank you, Anthony. Phil, still banging on about mixing in key. Stop looking at screens and get to know your music like in the old days, says Anthony. Um, I do love your lives, Phil. Anthony's very polite I, and, I, and I appreciate this stuff. The mini sets is a good idea. Listen, Anthony, try it, mate. Just try it. Because the things that you can do once you've got your tracks in key are streets ahead of what you used to be able to do with vinyl. And you're, there's no going back. Once you're mixed in key, you're not going back, mate. Give it a go. But thank you very much. Steve says that course sounds great. I can't wait. Oh, by the way, it's easy. That's the thing. If it was, if you were going to be spending hours figuring this out, and then every mix was like, oh no, can I mix in key? And what? Uh, 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 oh, it's rubbish. But it's not. It's easy. Second, one second, one second. Look, dot dot. Check mix. It's very simple. That's the thing is this stuff is not hard. Um, right, one or two more then, because uh, as you can tell, we're very excited. We've been working on this since about May uh, and planning it for a lot longer than that. We actually were planning this before lockdown. Can you believe that? But what happened was lockdown hit and guess what? All the DJs weren't working. Layback Luke wasn't working. James Hype wasn't working. Jazzy Jeff wasn't working. And I'm saying to these guys, come on, we can make those courses now that we've been trying to get you to make for ages. So ironically, while lockdown was going on, we were flying around the world making DJ courses. Don't tell anyone um, because the DJs weren't doing anything. It was a golden opportunity for us to make that content that you guys are so loving uh, at the moment. Uh, and all those courses on our site, um, basically uh, were an opportunistic grabbing the DJs while all their gigs were canceled. But we were thinking about this long before that and we've wanted to make it for many years. So finally, we got a chance to make it this year. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so it's a course with, you'll see me in it teaching a lot of the stuff, but also you'll see Steve Canueto, who a lot of you will know from his scratching course, teaching a lot of stuff as well in this course. Uh, it is a real digital DJ tips in-house effort, uh, which is probably why we're very excited about it anyway. Um, right, uh, I'm going to pull one more comment out live because I really do have to get out of here and continue. Uh, I've actually just remembered talking to you about it. Lots of things I do need to do to make sure we're ready on Thursday to launch this. So better get on with some of those. Um, George, how will this new course differ from some of the other mixing and digital mobile DJ courses that you guys sell? Very simple. This course uses the music that mobile and wedding DJs are playing today and have been playing forever. This is the big songs that everyone knows when you think of a mobile disco. There are songs you have to play, doesn't matter that there's new music coming out. It doesn't matter that new stars are important. It doesn't matter about any of that stuff. Yes, new songs get played at weddings, but at a wedding or at a corporate event, a new song generally means at some point within the last year and not in the last three months, because that doesn't count. That, that, that is not even known to the kind of crowds you get there. So these worlds move very slowly and the music in it moves very slowly as well. So. This is different from any other mixing training that we've taught for two big reasons. One, it uses the music that mobile, wedding, corporate, event, party DJs use. It doesn't use dance music. It doesn't use the versions of that music that are produced by specialist websites and specialist download pools in order to make it easier to mix because that's boring and that is cheating in a way. What we want to do is show you what the, and this actually circles back to what was being said in a couple of those comments. We want to show you how you can mix with the radio versions, the commercial versions, the three minute versions of the songs that everyone wants to hear. Because nowadays you can. 
Nowadays, you don't need DJ-friendly versions and club mixes and VIP mixes, and you don't need to join download pools and go searching every time a new song comes out. Now I've got to go and find a version of that song that I can actually mix. As long as you know the stuff in this course, you can mix with any version, so you're not wasting time finding special versions, not spending more money on expensive pools that you don't need, and you're having more fun, because if you can mix with any version of anything, it's freedom and it is more fun because there's more fulfillment in it. So for all those reasons, this course is different. It's the music that everyone wants at that kind of gig, and we show you how to mix with the very same versions that get played on the radio and that people listen to at home and on Spotify and so on. It's almost simplifying the whole thing, but at the same time, making it um, up to date by applying all the stuff that we teach as a school and that the best DJs are doing nowadays everywhere, but it comes ultimately from clubs. That's where this DJing started. Uh, right, let's now, um, I mean, there's so many great comments here. If you've asked on Facebook, we will get to you and we will answer you. Uh, I mean, they really are. I'm looking through them now. They're absolutely fantastic. If you've asked on YouTube, just go and ask again. Do me a favor, go and ask again, either on Facebook or underneath in the YouTube comments when the video becomes a, you know, the live stream becomes a video and we will answer you. Uh, but it's lovely to see you all chatting to each other as well. This is just absolutely cool. By this time I can see, uh, as I always say, how great our community is because you're just all not only helping each other but doing it in a super polite way as you always do. Um, let's go grab one or, I must look, I always struggle on the last question, don't I? I need to get a tactic for this because I'm always looking for something cool to end off on. Um, but uh, I think I'll just end off on a, <laughs> oh, we are a company. Niels, when can we sign up? Niels, you can sign up on Thursday. The important thing you need to know is that we are going to let you know by email about this course. So you need to go to digitaldjtips.com. Not only will you find the five music prep sequences of the best mobile and wedding DJs there, which is the article that is kind of a shortened version of the first module in this course, uh, where we teach this stuff, where you look over our shoulders, where we, we do it with real music and with, uh, with real software and so on. Uh, so not only um, is this a shortened version of that, where you can, you can revise the five things we've talked about today, but on the same page, you'll find our sign up. So you can click here, you can click the join button at the top, you can click the big banner at the top, doesn't matter where you go, get your email address into our site. If you do that between now and Thursday, in other words, Go do it straight away. We will email you. Not only then will you be able to get the course as soon as it's available, but you'll get the very generous, as I'm sure any of you who've bought any of our courses in the past know, opening week saving, opening week offer. Uh, so do make sure you're on the Digital DJ Tips list. That is how you can sign up for the course. And that's it. We're done for today. Thank you very much for joining me. From Phil here in a busy but excited Digital DJ Tips HQ, all that's left to say is get good, get out there, make the moments, and watch your inbox on Thursday for news of this course dropping. And join me on Thursday for a very special launch live stream. Same time, same place. Till then, bye-bye.